Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Skullrood, and as we um, continue with our Inside Look series, as we interview the radio play-by-play voices of so many of these universities that have the uh, star players going into the, into the NFL draft, about to uh, do the combine, we are hitting episode number 200. This is a very special episode for me. Um, having been involved and in doing this this uh, podcast now for three years, um, we've put a lot of time and effort into this. We are starting our fourth year of the, of the podcast. We are now on our fifth year, or about to start our fifth year in the beginning of April of Skull King Football in general. And we want to thank you guys for listening to the podcast, for um, sharing the podcast um, and being willing to be a little uh, generous with those around you and not just um, keeping all this information we give you to yourself. So uh, what we want to do to celebrate our 200th episode is we are actually giving away, which you'll only be able to see this actually on, um, on the YouTube video, but uh, you can believe it. Uh, we are actually giving away a signed Tyreek Hill uh, photo. Um, that uh, it is uh, authenticated and everything has the authentication paperwork. So uh, we are giving away a Tyreek Hill uh, photo uh, to celebrate this. And so all you have to do in order to get that is to um, whether whatever platform you're on, like um, and share, like and share um, our our uh, our podcast podcast number two hundred. Um, you can do that on any of your social medias, whether it's uh, um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, um, uh, YouTube, wherever you, wherever you um, view our, um, our podcast or listen to our podcast. Um, and the way that you enter into that is to, again, like and share it and then just give us a screenshot and, you know, you know, send a, a direct to us of either, well, we'll see if you like or share it on most social media sites. Um, so if you're on Facebook or you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram or Twitter, we will see it. Uh, we will also see if you like it on, um, on YouTube. Uh, but if you, uh, if you share it from YouTube, you'll probably need to take just a quick screenshot and uh, send us a picture to one of our, our, uh, um, one of our social media things, which is in the, de- in the show notes, in the details uh, below the show, whether you're listening to the podcast or seeing it on YouTube or from our website. So um, why don't we go ahead and move into the uh, special portion uh, or the regular portion of the show. Now that we've kind of made the big announcement, um, we are in this episode talking with uh, the voice of the Miami Hurricanes, Mr. Joe is Joe Zagaki about uh, running back uh, Travis Homer. Uh, should be a fun conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it as we continue to learn more about um, these uh, players in our Inside the Look series presented by StatRoute, uh, your number one source for fantasy statistics for right now for NFL and NBA and soon to be MLB. So again, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this interview. All right, Skull King Nation, we are back with our Inside Look series. And uh, today, in today's interview, we are speaking with uh, Joe Zagaki, who is the uh, voice of the Miami Hurricanes. We'll be talking about uh, Travis Homer, uh, the running back. Uh, Joe, we want to thank you for, uh, for coming on the show today. Sure, my pleasure. All right, so Travis Homer, 5'11", 195 pounds. Um, this past year in 2018, finished with 985 rush yards, four touchdowns. Um, almost was it 19 receptions, 186 yards catching out of the backfield. Um, can you give us just a little bit of an overview from your perspective on on Travis Homer uh, this this year and, and especially last year when uh, when he was kind of forced into being the lead uh, the lead back for Miami? Yeah, I think uh, Homer is a bit of a surprise, and he's a guy that packs a big punch. He's not that big, but pound for pound, he's one of the toughest football players uh, that you come across. He he uh, entered the fray for Miami in, during the 2017 season after Mark Walton was injured, and there were a lot of questions about whether or not Homer uh, could pick up the slack. And uh, the thing that he brought to the Miami offense uh, was the, the big play. He hit the big play many times, uh, long runs against Virginia Tech, 
long runs against Notre Dame for touchdowns and uh, maybe was a, a tad faster than Mark Walton. And certainly a pleasant surprise because Walton was a very good college player, both running the football and catching it out of the backfield and, and brought good leadership. Homer a little bit more on the quiet side, uh, but was used in a variety of ways, uh, not only for his running skills, uh, not only catching screen passes, but was very adept when Miami flexed him out, put him in the slot, and was able to run uh, pass patterns and uh, get him on matchups with linebackers in the passing game. He was really effective that way. Uh, so Homer had two good years for Miami. I wouldn't say they were spectacular years. Uh, I still think his best football is in front of him and uh, quite frankly was surprised that he decided to leave early. Yeah, he, uh, in terms, I mean, just looking at in terms of his stats, I know that it, it looks to me like uh, Miami doesn't quite do as much, either they, they're, they're transitioning or they're, they're switching in running backs a little more often than a lot of teams, or they're just not giving, or they're just, it seems like they're more of a, a pass heavy team. Is that would would you, would you uh, uh, kind of expound on that a little bit? Well, I think Coach Rick was uh, committed to a running game. And um, Homer came up uh, just short of 1,000 yards in each season. He needed uh, big games, uh, ironically, or coincidentally, against Wisconsin both the years to get to 1,000 yards. So in uh, both the, the game at Yankee Stadium, the Pinstripe Bowl, and the game at home uh, at the Orange Bowl game, uh, wasn't able to crack 1,000 yards, wasn't able to crack 100 yards against Wisconsin. He split time with D.J. Dallas in the backfield. Uh, I think with in college football, uh, most teams don't have just one primary guy, and Homer got the bulk of the carries, but D.J. Dallas wasn't too far behind him in terms of the amount of plays Dallas was receiving. So I would say it was probably, I don't know, 60-40 in the backfield maybe. Um, Homer this year um, may have been able to get a few extra yards, but he did get run down a couple times this season in the open field. Uh, once against Virginia, it looked like he was going to uh, go all the way for a touchdown, and uh, they had a defensive back come all the way across the field. Uh, he was able to corral Homer before he got to the end zone. I would say that this year, his past season, he probably got run down a little bit more than he did his junior year. And I think this year got off to a slower start. The LSU game wasn't playing with uh, quite the same ferocity or tenacity that we saw the previous year, uh, and it took him a little while to get going this past season. Okay. Um, in terms of his running style, you know, you said he, you know, he can run with power, especially he's not a big guy, you know, 5'11", 195, but, you know, from the, from the tape that I watched, he, he definitely has the, the tenacity to drop his shoulder um, to, you know, run, you know, try to run over a linebacker. Saw that a couple of times. Um, you know, he has good speed, not, you know, he's not the, the overall burner that you see in some running backs, but, you know, he, I love that he is willing to run angry, I guess you could say. Uh, reminds me a little bit of, you know, especially for a guy his size, um, you know, a Thomas Rawls from a couple uh, from a few years ago coming out of, I believe it was uh, Central Michigan. I think he takes a great pride in showing his toughness. And like I said before, pound for pound, he's one of the tougher guys you would meet. You'd see him uh, without his pad and say, man, that's your, that's your starting running back. He doesn't look like it. Uh, there was a game against Georgia Tech this year in Miami and lost couple of games in a row, and their season was uh, really jackknifing for him. It was late in the game. Miami needed a first down. Uh, uh, Homer caught the ball on, on a swing pass and just lowered his right shoulder and obliterated the linebacker. I thought not only did it show toughness, but it showed a lot of pride because of where Miami was in their season and where they were in that game. So he's not afraid to run over people now. Is that going to translate to the next level where the linebackers are a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger? Uh, he doesn't run out of bounds a lot. Uh, he's not afraid uh, to try to break tackles. He's not afraid to bring his own blocking with him. He's not afraid to show his toughness. I think those are all uh, very good qualities uh, for homers. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how it does translate to the NFL. Uh, I think he's going to be a, a pick probably on the, uh, on the third day of the draft. Uh, I hope he does get drafted. Uh, he's going to give whoever takes him, he's going to give him great energy. Uh, not the most demonstrative guy or voluble guy, uh, a bit on the quiet side, but he will bring great energy. He'll bring great toughness to a team. Yeah, it, you know, you talked about uh, you know catching the swing pass and stuff. That's one thing I noticed that uh, on on some of his on some of his tape, he does a pretty good job of catching the ball out of the backfield. 
um, and and making sure he uses uh, you know the the lineman on screens and uses uses his blockers pretty well uh, to to be able to make sure that he can get as many yards as he can out of those swing passes out of the backfield. Yeah, I think he's a, a real asset in the passing game. I think he has good hands. I think he's got good vision. I think he's got a good understanding of the passing game. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when Miami used him in the slot, he usually won those matchups. Uh, those were matchups he looked forward to. Uh, Miami often would empty the backfield and put him out there. And uh, that was a very positive part of Miami's offense, especially, you know, this year Miami struggled on offense just about uh, with anything that they were doing. But uh, I think he had home of the ball in open space. He can be a dangerous player. Yeah, honestly, you know, kind of the way you're describing it reminds me a lot of a of a former um, former Miami running back who uh, plays for the Browns, Duke Johnson. Just kind of the way that he's been utilized now, you know, as a slot receiver, catching the ball out of the backfield, can run very well out of the backfield as well. Just he that's that's kind of the vibe I'm getting about about Travis Homer um, as you as you're talking about him right now. You know, I think it's a pretty good comparison. I think he's a little bit bigger than Duke, and I think Duke is a little bit faster than Travis. But I do think both of them are dangerous weapons when they get matched up uh, in the passing game. And both have uh, a good nose for the end zone. Homer scored a lot of touchdowns for Miami. Uh, took a lot of pride in that. And again, uh, not a guy that goes down easily. Uh, a guy that's not afraid to take on a linebacker or a safety or a defensive back. And uh, not afraid to, uh, to be physical uh, and finish his runs in a very hard, positive manner. Yeah, to go along with that, I think what what also kind of stuck out to me is that he can be very slippery as well. Uh, he seemed to have pretty loose hips moving, you know, moving through the line, you know, making those quick the 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 quick side steps and everything to get loose. Uh, it seems that he can he has that ability to run for power when necessary. But he also it looks like to me that he has you know he has that kind of quick twitch to be able to not have to run someone over if he if he knows that he can get away. Yeah, I don't know if he's a you know, I don't know if he's a game breaker. Uh, he finished the season for Miami in a long touchdown run against Pittsburgh. Uh, I mentioned last year against Virginia Tech he had a long touchdown run. Uh, those touchdowns, the long runs, uh, you know, he had a he had a really good uh, maybe it was a coincidence or maybe it was his gift for time and score, but uh, in his two years in Miami he did have long runs with touchdowns that put games to bed. And uh, I think that's important for a guy to know where, where the game stands. If he can break one, uh, does he put the game to, to bed? And, and he was able to do that to the University of Miami a couple of times. Uh, so uh, he has shown the ability uh, to get away. I, I don't know if he was injured this year, um, but early in the season, it, it was a case where uh, I thought he was getting caught too many times, but as the year went on, uh, we saw more of the homer that we that we, we saw uh, that we witnessed a, a year ago, where uh, he was able to take a hand off, break a few tackles, get into the secondary, and then finish in the end zone. All righty. Well, Joe, uh, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for taking, uh, giving us some of your time to to talk about Travis Homer. Uh, we really appreciate. It. Like I said, I've I really have enjoyed. Uh, getting a, a chance to to hear a little bit more about each of these players from uh, the guys who have covered them and and seen them a little more intimately in a, in a in a little more broader light. So thank you again, Joe, for for take for giving us some of your time to to talk about Travis today. Yep, anytime. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Hey, Skull King Nation! Thank you for listening to the Skull King Football Podcast. Did you like this episode? If so, be sure to go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube to subscribe. Also, please leave us a rating and reviews to let us know how we can better help you rule your leagues.